I'm sure everyone is familiar with the game show Jeopardy. It's been airing since 1964, except that weird but brief three-year hiatus in the 70s, and it has amassed over 8,000 episodes. The show is most memorably hosted by the late Alex Trebek from 1984 until his death in 2020. Trebek is a legend, and will be who most people will associate the show with for decades to come. But he didn't create the show. No, no, no. That was Merv Griffin. I know this, and you probably know this because Merv slapped his name all over the place so that you couldn't possibly forget who was responsible for all this primetime fun you're having. Merv Griffin, Merv Griffin, Merv Griffin! I can't blame him. Merv must have been a genius. He flipped the whole question and answer structure, something very commonplace in trivia, onto its head and said, let's ask the answers first and guess the question second. No one second-guessed Merv over this, nor did they second-answer because they were too confused to know how. Merv, what, what is... What are, you, what are you doing, Merv? This guy also created Will of Fortune. Who is Merv? I just told you, he's the guy that created Jeopardy and Will of Fortune. Oh wait, I was answering myself in the form of a... Anyway, who wrote this script? Who is I did? <sighs> there are video game versions of Jeopardy on just about every gaming console and household appliance sold since the 80s. The NES had a whopping four total Jeopardy games. Unfortunately, none of them feature Alex Trebek. So, without further ado, let's see what's up. This video will be a little different than my others in that I can safely lump three games together. Jeopardy, Jeopardy Jr., and Jeopardy 25th Anniversary. These games are the exact same with very minor differences. The first thing I want to draw your attention to is, of course, Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin. Merv Griffin. Each of these games boasts having over 2,000 answers across 400 categories. I would have expected the 25th Anniversary Edition to have at least broadened that pool a little bit, and while 2,000 answers in 400 categories seems like a decent amount, I managed to get the same category and answers from playing two times in a row. That should be rare to do, and I'm not usually a lucky person, so who knows. Next, it's worth noting that each has slightly different character selections. Not a ton of variety here, but at least you have some options. As far as the way you play, each of these three games are the same. You can play with up to three players, so you and two buds, or you can choose to play against the computer's AI opponents. You can select a difficulty of easy, medium, or hard. Some of the references here are dated and can make it more difficult for a modern player, but generally, even on hard, you won't feel too out of your depth. Obviously, Jeopardy! Jr. is the easiest, as it is meant for kids, but the two non-kid games aren't terribly challenging, depending on the categories, of course, and whether or not you're a certified smarty pants. The categories are as varied as they are in the show. A good mix of history, science, pop culture, puns, and more. It even seems that some of the computer contestants will have their own strengths and weaknesses for certain categories as well. Maybe I imagined it, but I've seen a contestant just mow down an entire category before and completely whiff on others. Interestingly, to buzz in, you don't press A or B as you would expect. Instead, you press down on the D-pad. When it's time to answer, you have to select letter by letter under a time limit, so longer answers are stressful and spelling is key. The game is forgiving by letting you get by with last names, like Lincoln instead of typing out Abraham Lincoln, and you can use an ampersand instead of and, or leave off certain articles like A or the, depending on the answer. There's no time limit on the rounds themselves, so the entire answer board will be cleared before you move on to second or final Jeopardy. Hey, without commercials there to interrupt us, we can actually get through the whole dang board. All the usual Jeopardy frills are here, and awkward celebrations for correct answers. Or questions. One interesting thing is that when I played Jeopardy and Jeopardy Jr., the computer had me up against the same character, Beryl. How old are you, Beryl? Either way, the computer puts up a good fight and forces you to be quick on the buzzer, and, if you pay attention, their incorrect answers may unveil bits of the right answer. Final Jeopardy works exactly how you'd expect. First, you get a screen showing you how it's done. Then, you're shown the category and can wager whatever you want. The computer-controlled contestants rarely go balls out here, so you generally have a shot to win if you've been lagging behind. And if you win, you get a very mild congratulations screen, and then you can opt to play again. And that's about it.
Next up is Talking Super Jeopardy, or just Super Jeopardy, if you wish. This one is different in a number of ways. The presentation has more flash, it's more interesting to look at, it has more character, and there's your host, Alex Trewutt. That's not Alex Trebek. I don't know who that guy is, but he looks like he sells vacuum cleaners or monorails. And he claps a lot, and it's weird. In fact, they all clap when they get something right, and it's weird. Where's the music? Why does it sound like they're clapping from inside a bathroom stall? Then there's the talking part. Computer-generated voices have come a long, long way since this game came out. Imagine talking to one of your in-home devices and it responding like Hal from Space Odyssey. For 600 points, the answer is... It's not great, it's barely audible, and it is absolutely unnecessary, but it does put the talking in Super Talking Jeopardy. Or Talking Super Jeopardy. Or Jeopardy, look who's talking now. This version boasts 2,000 new questions. But it's not clear if that means there are 4,000 total now, or just 2,000 new ones. My bet is on the latter. Everything else works about the same, except now instead of pressing down on the D-pad to buzz in, you can press the A button, which seems like a more natural choice. This one is set up like a tournament of champions. In the first round, you square off against three other opponents in the quarterfinals. And if you win this one, you receive a code to play in the semifinal round, and at the end of that one, you receive yet another code for the final round. You can even choose which round you want to start in. And in this one, you can play with up to four players. In this first round, at least, with one of you getting eliminated as you go. I think this is kind of neat, really. I wonder how many people have used this game for Elimination Jeopardy tournaments. Here you get 80 seconds to answer questions, which is a bit longer than the other games by about 20 seconds. It makes entering some of the wordier answers less stressful. And of course, this wouldn't be a Jeopardy game without the endorsement of Merv Griffin. And right there he is on the title screen. Hi, Merv! In all, with these Jeopardy games, you get about what you would expect. You can have some fun with multiplayer, you can challenge yourself with single player. Entering answers with your controller was as laborious then as it is now, so in that way this game does hold up. The only thing will be the current event references will most likely be too obscure for the modern player. That's not to say these games aren't competent for what they are. If you're a Jep head, then going back to play these may induce you with some feeling of long lost nostalgia. Otherwise, there are endless other more engaging ways to play a Jeopardy-like game or a spin-off these days. Well, as always, who is Merv Griffin? And thanks for clapping. <laughs>